Now, it was an explosive day at the hush money trial of a former U.S. President Donald Trump. While leaving the courtroom, he repeated his claim of innocence. We are so innocent, there's never been anything like it. Trump is facing accusations of falsifying business records to cover up a former lawyer's payment to an adult film star. Prosecutors accuse him of paying Stormy Daniels to keep quiet about an alleged encounter ahead of the 2016 election. Now, Trump has denied ever having sex with Daniels. She testified for a second and, and final day today and faced tough questions from Trump's lawyers who tried to poke holes in her account of the alleged affair. Our politics reporter, Jimena Bustillo, uh, was in that courtroom today. She uh, joins us now from New York. Uh, good to speak with you. Talk to me about what stood out uh, for you in the testimony today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, as you just mentioned, the Trump defense team really tried to poke holes into Stormy Daniels' testimony. And I think that is what we all drew away from coming out of the morning uh, when she wrapped up her testimony was that back and forth between Trump att attorney Susan Nichols and adult film star Stormy Daniels on the stand as they repeatedly tried to get her to admit that she had falsified a story and repeatedly she stood her ground and said that she, in fact, did not. And Trump still denies that he had any sexual encounter with uh, Stormy Daniels. How has Trump's team been reacting to the testimony? Right. And Trump denies any account of an affair, and that, that's why they were trying to get her to admit that she had falsified the story over and over again. I think everyone was getting a little frustrated uh, during this questioning, both the defense, the prosecution, and Daniels herself, as she stood her ground and said that, no, she's not falsifying her story. But at the end of the day, we saw the Trump team uh, try to move for a motion to dismiss the trial for a mistrial. Uh, this was the second time that they did it, the first time that they did it was on Tuesday after her first day of testimony, where we had a very graphic, uh, detailed testimony about that account, alleged account in 2006 with her and Trump in a hotel. And so they went to motion for a mistrial, but for a second time, the judge denied it. Uh, and she stood her ground, as you said, um, and she did give a lot of graphic details. I mean, there's this was a, a, a very... Uh, uh, detailed account of what she says happened. Why do you think that she was so vivid in her testimony? So the prosecution argues that they wanted her to be vivid in her testimony in order to increase her credibility. If she could remember very key details, such as like the tile flooring uh, on, on that night, what the hotel looked like, what Trump was wearing, that could increase credibility, especially when the defense's job is to discredit her and herself as a witness, you know, lacks credibility. And the judge herself himself acknowledged this, allowing for some of those questions uh, to be asked. You also so have to remember that the prosecution wants to prove intent here. Uh, this is a trial about business records and falsified business records. With Stormy Daniels' testimony, they are trying to show that Trump had something to hide. And so what she is detailing is the thing that they are arguing Trump wanted to hide. Uh, you mentioned the, the request for two mistrials. Um, we even saw him storm out of the courtroom when he got denied in the past. So this isn't um, what happened today, but he's saying in it in a fundraising email. He's using this to, to now try and fundraise. So what do you think this is? Yeah, he sent out an email saying that he stormed out of the courtroom. Uh, he has done this before, the idea of sending an email saying that he stormed out of the courtroom. I was in that courtroom watching him at the end of the day. He, in fact, did not storm out of the courtroom. He left uh, flanked by his legal team alongside everyone else when the judge ended for the day. Uh, it was very regular procedure, so no, no storming happened today. Um, but he does use these campaign emails as well as posts on his social media site Truth Social to energize his voter base and kind of use the courtroom and these trials, which he has long said are a political witch hunt and are very unfair, uh, to mobilize his base in that way. There are no cameras, no audio allowed in the courtroom, so he kind of gets away with, with stretching the truth on what might happen in there. There's been a lot of talk about Stormy Daniels' uh, testimony, the, the fact that she's not done what you might traditionally see a woman in her situation do, kind of put their head down, uh, maybe uh, talk about feeling 
uh, shame about it. Uh, that's not coming from her. There are There's commentary talking about how she appears empowered or others watching her might feel empowered uh, from the kind of testimony that she's delivering. Um, what are you seeing to that end? How? how uh, what's the reaction in terms of how this could possibly change things uh, for others who might take the stand in, in cases to, that are maybe not the same, but perhaps similar? Yeah, I mean, Stormy Daniels' story is not new, and that's something that Judge Juan Marchand said himself, you know, when we were talking about this idea of a mistrial because her story, quote unquote, keeps changing as the as the defense tried to argue. But she has been fairly public in cable news networks, in one-on-one -on -one interviews with other journalists. She's written about this encounter uh, in books and in other areas. Um, so she has been very public with her story, and I think that has resonated with, with certain people. Uh, for other people, it has resonated poorly. Um, you know, in the courtroom, the pu general public is allowed to be there. And some of the members of the public did feel like she was very empowering to watch. Other members uh, kind of questioned why she was there. Again, this is a trial about business records. And I think that the two kind of get lost like two ships in the night a little bit. So the prosecution is going to have to continue to connect those dots, particularly for a jury, which we don't know how closely the jury may have been following this storyline dating back even to 2016 uh, when the first news about these payments first broke. Uh, this might be completely new information for, for some members of the jury. For other members of the jury, this might be something that they have heard and have been following for a while since she has been so public with this before. NPR reporter Jimena Bustillo, thank you so much for making the time. Thank you.